These days, if a piece of tech isn't the fastest, the biggest and the brightest gadget in town, it's tempting to write it off as a failure. But this iconic gaming gadget proves that sometimes less really can be more. Here's why. The end of the 80s saw Nintendo, Sega and Atari all competing for the handheld gaming crown. Of these three titans, Nintendo's console was the least powerful by far, and yet the Game Boy blasted past its rivals to become a genuine gaming icon. The Game Boy was devised by Nintendo's R&D One division, led by Gunpei Yokoi, a legendary figure who was the brains behind Nintendo's first handheld, the Game & Watch. It was a series of bold decisions from Yokoi's design team that made the Game Boy an unlikely success. The Game Boy didn't have the fanciest tech around, quite the opposite. Its processing power wasn't noteworthy, it only had a few buttons, and its tiny monochrome screen could only handle four shades of grey, which sounds like some very lacklustre erotic fiction. And then she kissed his hair or something, but he didn't like it. Compared to Sega's Game Gear and Atari's Lynx, which both had backlit colour screens, the Game Boy looked retro even in 1990. But what seemed like this console's weaknesses were actually its biggest strengths. With their big, bright displays, the Lynx and Game Gear each required six AA batteries, which they drained in just a few hours. The Game Boy, by contrast, lasted way longer, and by deploying more modest tech, Nintendo was able to keep the price down. Less is more, that's the key to the Game Boy puzzle. And speaking of puzzles, if you really want to see what made the system so popular, you just need to flip it around. Tetris was born in Russia, but the rights to distribute the game on consoles were bought by Dutch-born entrepreneur Henk Rogers. Rogers says he approached Nintendo about using the game, telling them that if they bundled the Game Boy with Mario, they'd sell it to kids, but if they went with Tetris, they'd sell it to everyone. Indeed, while Sega was busy pushing Sonic, the broad appeal of Tetris gave the Game Boy a flying start that left its rivals in the dust. Tetris got us all hooked on the famous Type A music, which is actually a Russian folk tune, and is the source of a mental phenomena called Tetris Syndrome, which can cause hardcore players to see falling shapes while drifting off to sleep, or in the corner of their eyes. Luke, hey. I, just got, I just got off the phone with Kate from finance. Um, there's, been like a, there's been like a really weird problem with your, with your expense report. Is, is it true you actually commissioned an entire waxwork statue of, of you for the office? With a cunning design and a brilliant bundled game, the Game Boy stormed the world, eventually getting a colour makeover in 1998. In the US, Nintendo sold a million Game Boys in just a few weeks, while the colourful sequel took combined sales to nearly 120 million units. These consoles paved the way for the Game Boy Advance and SP, as well as quirky accessories like the Game Boy Camera and Game Boy Printer. The Game Boy also served as a launch pad for the Pokemon franchise, which has ballooned into movies, trading cards and TV. The Game Boy line has died out now, replaced by the even more popular Nintendo DS, but its cultural impact is still felt. This original model that was demolished in the Gulf War but still functions became an internet sensation, while today bands use old Game Boys to create 8-bit music. The Game Boy proved you need more than just cutting-edge tech to capture hearts and minds, something we'd do well to remember in today's world of bigger and bigger screens and more powerful processors. What Nintendo made was an unlikely masterpiece, and I love it so much I could kiss it, but I won't because I don't know where this one has been for the last 24 years. Do you have fond memories of the Game Boy, and can you think of any other gadgets that have proved to be unexpected winners? Let me know and check back next time for another Adventure in Tech.